Today, the movie we're discussing has been crafted from an exceptional story. It revolves around an elderly person and a 16-year-old girl. Why are they growing crops on an island, which is built above the river? So friends, today, we are going to explain, Corn Island, we hope, you will enjoy the story. At the start of the story, we meet an elderly man, whose name, Elias. He is residing in the land of Abkhazia. The population in this island is scant, that's the reason residents in this area have to exert significant effort for even minor achievements. In this locale, there exists a river known as Inguri River. During the springtime, the water level of this river recedes notably, resulting in the formation of small islands, and these small islands have no owner. Therefore, Ilias goes to an island which is very small. He checks the soil there, which is very fertile, and now he wants to farm there so that his winters pass comfortably. Actually, Russia wants to seize their country, but Georgia, their neighboring country, is fighting against Russia so that they cannot take control of this land. That's why the people here don't have as much land. Whatever land is left, has been destroyed due to the war. And now, Ilias has decided to farm on this small island. The next day, he brings some wood by boat, because until his crop is ready, he'll have to stay here. That's why he'll need to build his living space here. He is very old, so it's very difficult for him to make a home for living. He becomes capable of erecting four wooden pillars with great difficulty. After doing so, he returns to his village and his home. Actually, they all are lived amidst forests so that soldiers don't reach them and they all can stay safe. The next day, Ilias once again heads towards the same island, and today, his granddaughter is with him. Her name is Mariam. Besides Elias, Mariam doesn't have anyone else as both her parents have passed away. She is a very quiet girl, perhaps because she has seen a lot of sorrow at such a young age. After reaching the island, the first thing they do is set up a net to catch fish. Then, Mariam helps her grandfather, and during this time, she sees some soldiers passing by on the river. She asks her grandfather if they are Georgian soldiers, which he says, yes, they are Georgian soldiers. They work the entire day, but the pace of work is very slow because Ilias cannot do too much work, he is very old. In the evening, they light a fire and use the nets they had set up to catch fish. After catching the fish, they prepare their meal because they have nothing else to eat besides it. Even today, they couldn't prepare their living space there, so they had to return to the village. The next day, they return once again, and today Ilias is determined to build his wooden house here at any cost, so that he can start farming as soon as possible. He starts working with full dedication, and while he is working with his granddaughter, at that moment, Georgian soldiers pass by once more and they are paying close attention to Mariam. Mariam also watches them closely, but she doesn't understand why the soldiers were observing her so intently. Similarly, Ilias completes building his wooden house today, and from tomorrow onwards, he will start farming here. That's why today he has to return to the village. The following day, he once again comes here with his granddaughter. Even though Mariam doesn't work much there, but Ilias still worries about her. He doesn't want to leave her alone in the village. Ilias starts his farming work and works hard until noon, doing some digging himself. He becomes very tired, so he goes inside and falls asleep. Suddenly, he is jolted awake by the sound of gunshots. Rushing outside, he observes a group of people shouting from across the river, where the gunfire originated. Actually, now the place is under the control of Russian soldiers, but he doesn't see anyone there. After working all day, he returns to his village once again. The next morning, he comes back with Mariam, and today they start planting seeds. As they were planting the seeds, lightning streaked across the sky, indicating that it was going to rain soon. If it rained, the river water would swell, potentially submerging the entire land underwater. But Ilias is confident that nothing will happen. He enters inside with his granddaughter and waits for the rain to stop. However, the rain is pouring heavily, and the river's flow has increased significantly. Therefore, their boat is rocking violently. Ilias fears that his boat might drift away, and if that happens, both of them will be stranded here. So, in the heavy rain, Ilias goes outside with his granddaughter and somehow manages to pull the boat up to the shore. They both get completely drenched, so Ilias lights a fire. After a while, the rain stops. Ilias sees that due to the strong current of the river, the water is coming towards the upper side, and they will have to stop this water at any cost. So, they both head to the jungle, where they cut wood and bring it back. They construct a small dam using the wood to prevent water from entering. In this manner, several days go by, and the seeds they had sown have turned into small plants, which makes Ilias very happy because this crop is their last hope. At this time, due to the war, famine prevails on all sides. They have nothing to eat here, they are surviving solely on fish. One day, 
After attending to the crops, when Ilias goes inside to sleep at night, he hears some noises. However, he doesn't venture out because such sounds are common, emanating from the other side of the river where Russian soldiers are stationed. But today, a soldier comes to his island chasing a deer. He kills the deer and takes it away from this place in his boat. When Ilias wakes up in the morning, he sees that one side of his crops has been damaged. He understands that this is the work of some animal, and now he decides that he will keep watch at night. Once again, some soldiers pass by from the river, and once again, they stare at his granddaughter Miriam intently. Miriam is not very old, all of this is new to her. She doesn't know what's in their hearts, but Ilias understands everything. And when a soldier from the other side of the river shouting and calls out to Miriam, asking for her name, just then, Ilias takes out his gun and fires into the air. Hearing the sound, all three soldiers leave from there. Ilias is now very worried about his granddaughter. Although they talk very little, but today Ilias tells his granddaughter, I don't want you to be like me, I want you to study and do something for our village and our country. Although in this environment where war is raging on all sides, literacy is a challenging matter, but Ilias has faith in his granddaughter. Miriam also responds with a yes, meaning she also wants to fulfill her grandfather's dreams. Although how she will do it, she doesn't know anything. Just like every night, Ilias is standing guard on his farm today as well. The next morning, when Miriam goes to gather firewood, she sees someone among the crops and she calls out loudly for Ilias. When Ilias arrives, he sees a wounded Russian soldier there. If anyone finds out about this, they might kill both Ilias and Miriam along with the soldier. Just then, another boat arrives with soldiers from Georgia. They inquire if Ilias has seen any soldiers around. Ilias denies it. After that, he brings the wounded soldier inside the wooden house. He then instructs his granddaughter to stand guard outside. After that, he cleans the wounds of the Russian soldier, but he still doesn't come to his senses. Afterwards, he sends Miriam back to the village and tells her to bring some food and drinks quickly. Miriam quickly gathers all the supplies and returns. He then sends Miriam back to her village and prepares soup for the soldier. Afterwards, he keeps an eye on the soldier every day. After a few days, the soldier regains consciousness, and when he comes out from the wooden house, he sees that Ilias is working near his boat. Ilias quickly approaches the soldier and says, Go inside, if the Georgian soldiers see you, they'll kill both of us. And then Ilias heats up water for him. After that, Miriam also comes with supplies, and for the first time, she sees the soldier. The soldier also looks at her attentively, which brings a smile to Miriam's face. And today, for the first time, we see Miriam smiling. She's actually attracted to the soldier, but the biggest problem is that they both don't understand each other's language. One day, when the soldier was chopping wood, Miriam throws water at him and she runs towards the fields. The Russian soldier also follows her, and they both end up playing together in the river. Miriam is very happy, but then her grandfather sees her, which makes him very angry. He scolds Miriam severely and sends her away from this place. The next morning, when the Russian soldier is sitting, he hears the sound of a boat. He understands that Georgian soldiers are coming this way, so he quickly jumps into the water and conceals himself. Afterwards, the Georgian soldiers approach Ilias, which makes him very nervous. And the Georgian soldiers notice his anxiety. They ask him why he seemed flustered upon seeing them. He responds that he thought they were Russian soldiers. Following this, the commander remarks that they are thirsty and asks for water. When Ilias goes inside to fetch water, the soldiers follow closely behind him, approaching his wooden house and looking around. Actually, they now have suspicions about Ilias. Ilias asks the commander what they are searching for. The commander explains that a Russian soldier has fled from their area, and they are looking for him. He assures Ilias that once they find him, they will eliminate him. Afterward, they leave the area. Then the Russian soldier emerges, and he is trembling from the cold. Upon seeing his condition, Ilias lights a fire for him. The Russian soldier is deeply frightened. He knows that if the Georgian soldiers spot him, they will shoot him on sight. The following day, when Ilias comes to his wooden house, he sees that the door is open and the Russian soldier is not inside. He understands that the soldier has fled from there. Therefore, the next day, he brings Miriam to work on the island. But when Miriam finds out that the Russian soldier has left, she feels very bad. Miriam always remains sad, her eyes often brimming with tears, as she finds herself inexplicably drawn to the soldier. But why this happened, she doesn't know. Perhaps it's merely due to his age. Afterwards, another boat arrives with Russian soldiers who inquire about their comrade, but Ilias clearly refuses to provide any information and says that he doesn't know anything. Afterwards they all leave from there. Within a few days, the crop is fully ready, which is a very good harvest. 
Ilias decides to start harvesting today. However, when he begins, he notices that the flow of the river water is very fast, causing erosion of the island soil. Shortly after, it starts to rain, causing the island to gradually sink. Upon seeing all this, Ilias becomes very distressed, because all his hard work is now going to sink into the water. Miriam also comes to help him, she quickly cuts the crops and places them on their boat. When she finishes, Ilias sits Miriam on the boat and sends her to the village. He then goes to hold the wooden house, because he doesn't want it to sink. He can't believe that all his hard work is going to sink into the water. Due to the rapid rise in the water level, his wooden house and the entire crop gradually become submerged in the water. And along with the crop and the wooden house, Ilias also gets submerged in the water. Ilias had invested immense effort into his work here, with his crops thriving. His crops were also fully grown. But perhaps, that was his fate. This was the story of an old man and his granddaughter who had diligently cultivated the crop. But when the time came to harvest it, nature took everything away from them. So friends, how did you like this story? Please write in the comment box. We hope you enjoyed this story.